Hello everyone and welcome back to DBX Labs. In today's video, I'll be revisiting a high voltage circuit from an old video known as a Marx generator and greatly improving upon my previous design. Now a Marx generator is a type of multi-stage voltage multiplier circuit that consists of high voltage capacitors, resistors, and spark gaps. As far as voltage multiplier circuits go, there are really only two that find common use, the Marx generator and the cockroft walton voltage multiplier, both of which with their own distinguishing characteristics. The cockroft walton voltage multiplier, or more commonly referred to as just a CW multiplier, functions off of an alternating input voltage, stepping up the voltage at every stage with diodes and capacitors. This circuit is why I used in my video making a high voltage wand, and can be found prevalent in cheap high voltage modules like these boost converters. The nice thing about the CW multiplier circuit is that it provides a relatively constant high voltage output with low current. This makes it ideal for consumer products and high voltage power supplies. The downside to the CW multiplier is that it requires an AC input and the output voltage sees rapidly diminishing returns in current for a greater number of stages. Unlike the Cockroft Walton multiplier which can operate at any AC voltage given the proper diodes and capacitors, a Marx generator requires a high voltage DC input to trigger spark gaps at each stage. The benefit of this is that the output of a Marx generator is pulsed, with capabilities of extremely high voltages at extremely high peak currents. When a high voltage DC input is applied, the parallel capacitors of the circuit are charged through high resistance charging resistors, with a progressively slower rate of charging at the further stages. Eventually, the voltage across the first capacitor and spark gap exceeds the dielectric breakdown voltage of air, allowing for rapid discharge into the second capacitor and spark gap. This too fires and similarly triggers the third, fourth, and so on. Essentially, through discharging through spark gaps triggered at the first stage, the parallel capacitors of the circuit are temporarily placed in series with one another, adding their voltages together and creating massive voltages with large amounts of electrostatically stored charge. Open spark gaps also produce bright flashes of hard ultraviolet light which ionizes surrounding air. As a result, the firing of the first spark gap can easily trigger the firing of all gaps near spontaneously, allowing for extremely high rise times in the output high voltage pulse. While this is great for pulsed power experimentation, this also makes Marx generators extremely dangerous, so please do not attempt anything in this video unless you are experienced with high voltage electronics and are aware of the risks at hand. In my previous video, I built an 11-stage Marx generator out of hand-rolled polyethylene foil capacitors. However, even with a 15 kV power supply, this is barely able to produce a 100 kV output even with the most liberal approximations for the breakdown voltage of air. It won't take much to beat this, but I plan to do so by nearly an order of magnitude. To do this, we will have to revise pretty much the entire design. For this Marx generator, I'll be using 1 nanofarad 30 kV ceramic capacitors, 2 watt rated 1 megohm resistors, brass round head nails for the spark gaps, and an acrylic mount for the high voltage circuitry. While most of this is just assembly in accordance to the schematic, it is important to note that all resistors have to be coated with an insulative material. In my case, this was hot glue, which I found helped prevent losses through corona discharge or arcing over the resistors altogether. From my experience, hot glue is really your best friend in low budget high voltage projects and you'll see me using it extensively throughout this assembly. Now that the circuit is assembled on the acrylic, it's time to make sure that everything is insulated and tested out. I've exclusively used internally rectified flyback transformers with ZVS drivers to power Marx generators since their variable output voltage is in the right range for these capacitors and the current with a load tends to not melt my resistors. Here I am actually powering the new Marx off of the flyback high voltage supply mounted for another older Marx generator which will come up later. 
As you can see, the circuitry for the high voltage power supply is pretty minimal, being directly powered by a bench variable power supply. Together, the flyback and the ZVS driver cost about $20 on AliExpress, making them just about as expensive as the materials for the Marx generator itself. At 15 stages and a measured input voltage of 30 kilovolts, we would expect the output voltage here to be around 450 kilovolts. How close it actually is to this number is up for interpretation, as the only real empirical data I can gather from this is that we are getting arcs maxing out at around 5 inches or 13 centimeters. Now what's really neat about Marx generators is you can change the output voltage from positive to negative and vice versa just by switching the polarity of the input voltage. Because the high voltage DC input is positive relative to the ground input, by flipping the polarity you can pump negative charges up the stages just as easily as before with positive charges. This means that two identical Marx generators can operate with different polarity producing opposing voltages at their outputs and even larger arcs between them. Here I have the other Marx generators shown earlier. Because the polarity of the stages in this circuit is flipped, there's no need to change the input polarity when operating this Marx in tandem with the newly built one. Let's see how they run together powered by the same 30kV output of a rectified flyback.